Okay, so this is one picket total. Everything you see is made from one fence picket. I'm going to show you how to do it. It is super, super simple, very low expense, pretty decent profit margin. So this, the expense total, you're looking at maybe five bucks when you figure the nails, the glue. You're not using a lot of material. One picket, that's about it. I'm selling these for about 30 bucks a piece. That's a good price point. A lot of people can afford it. So let's get into the build. So first I took this planer thing and I like planed the picket. <clears throat> and so planing isn't necessary. I just did it to clean the board up a little bit. It really brought out that dark tone in that cedar. Made it really nice and easy to finish by the time I got to the end of it. Next we're gonna move over to the sable saw and rip this picket down to three and a half inches wide. Put the cutoff to the side. We're gonna make a mark at 12 inches from the bottom of the trellis and draw a line. And this is for a stop cut that we're gonna do later on when we cut out our spindles. Next, you're gonna take the cutoff piece. You're gonna measure 24 inches. And then you're gonna measure two 15 inch pieces and then leave the rest of that cutoff. And that's what we're gonna use for the rungs. So you should come out with one 24 inch piece from the cutoff, two 15 inch pieces, and then whatever's left. It's gonna be 16 inches to 17 and a half, depending on where the dog ear is. And so here we're cutting out the spindle. Now I moved the fence down to every five eighths of an inch from three and a half. So the first cut is at two and seven eighths and then I step it down every five eighths of an inch to get my spindles. The last spindle will be skinnier than the other five, but only by a sixteenth of an inch. It's not gonna be by much. So the last spindle might come out to seven sixteenths. It might even be three eighths, but it's not that big of a deal. It's not very noticeable but it still works. I'm not interested in getting this project down to a 16th or a 32nd inch tolerance. This works just fine. It's really hard to tell. So you should come out with six spindles total. And so now I'm ripping down the two 15 inch pieces and the rest of that cutoff, except for the 24 inch piece down to seven eighth inches wide. This is a little jig I made from the first one. I cannot really explain to you how to do it. It's, it's just so simple. I used some spacer blocks in my first trellis that I made I set this board underneath and put the screws where the gaps happen to fall out. And it's really, you just do it until it looks good. There's no specific gap between each board. I just did it till it looked mostly even, glued it and nailed it in place. And I made a jig before taking everything apart. And it worked out pretty well. So I only have two jigs, one for the bottom and then this other one, it really fans out the top. Just be careful when you're sliding it down, especially that first one because it will split the wood if you go too far. So the first spindle is set 12 inches above our stop cut. The second spindle is 16 inches from the top of that first rung. And then the top runner will be 24 inches above this rung that we're nailing down now. So 12 inches, 16 inches, 24 inches, that's your locations for your runners or your rungs, whatever you wanna call that part I am tracing the line and gluing before I nail these down and in case you're interested I am using 18 gauge 5 8 inch brad nails and I am nailing from both sides of the trellis and these are just a little close-up shot of the jig in case you could take a screenshot and help you make you one in the shop it really is very simple to do just be creative with whatever solution you come up with that's kind of what that was and right here, I'm pre-assembling the little square that's going to go between the top rung and the middle rung. And you just center it as best as you can. I find it's best to put it in place, trace the inside lines, take it off, glue, put the glue on the opposite side of the line, and then nail it down in place. I just centered it till it looks good. There's no specific measurements, like I said. Here, I'm coming through and nailing from the back side, nailing everything down. ignore the tongue i didn't notice it until i'm going back and editing that's kind of just a bad habit so we're flush cutting one thing i forgot to mention for the rungs you want to make one side as flush on the spindle as possible so you can come back and cut off as much excess from the other side 
and this will give you the spikes to go to the bottom of the trellis which you see here that's both cutoffs from the rungs that we placed on the trellis itself I cut a 45 degree angle to give us a spike and we're nailing it in place and that's really all you need here we're using tongue oil so I do a couple of coats on of tongue oil for projects like this and it works just fine for exterior projects now you got to do a couple of coats and if you're going to use it for a few years you're just going to have to oil it again in a couple years maybe next season but it's a really good finish it's really good for plants okay i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it helps as always if you like it like and subscribe it really helps the channel we're getting a lot of growth lately and i'm super super appreciative of it so appreciative that i made these plans available for free on my website it'll be linked in the description below if you don't feel like looking for the link it's burnstockdesign.com there's also a newsletter I haven't published anything yet. We are putting stuff together. You should be seeing something pretty soon. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my website. You'll get free stuff sent to you. Anytime I make a plan, it should automatically go to your email. Comment below if you try this. If you do build it, send me some pictures to my email through the website. I'd love to see it, and I'd love to hear success. I've been getting a lot of emails lately, so it's kind of hard to keep up. I promise I will try to catch up to every email. Any person that sent me an email, I am trying to catch up. It has just been a little overwhelming lately. A lot of people have been reaching out and I, I appreciate it so much. So thank you for watching and I will hopefully catch you on the next one.